Eric, there, there's so many contrasts. I mean, you hear uh, of what law has been through, and, and as Ruth says, nobody should go through that. But then Ruth raises some interesting points about some of the amazing things that social media does. I mean, think about Black Lives Matter. Think about Me Too. They wouldn't have happened without social media. It, it, the social media advancements, do, do they outweigh the negatives? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of positives and negatives of social media. You mentioned the Black Lives Matter movement. You know, in many respects, uh, smartphones and social media, they're the, the greatest tools of anti-racism ever invented. Uh, you know, the murder, the horrific murder of George Floyd, we would never have seen that had it not been for the invention of the smartphone. Uh, equally, we would never have seen the subsequent uh, global movement on anti-racism had it not been for the spread of social media. But that's not to say there aren't, uh, you know, so many negatives as well on mental health, disinformation, extremism, revenge porn. And these issues are going to get significantly worse uh, in the future. And as, as Ruth said, it's, it's more of a, a cultural issue as, as well as a, uh, you know, political or regulatory issue. It took us thousands of years, literally, to foster a civil society based on law, uh, respect, human rights. And with social media, it's kind of like a blank canvas. We really need to start to foster this kind of respectful culture online so that we can have all of the best of social media and none of the none of the worst. And actually it's not that newer technology. It's you know, we're talking twenty years now that we've had social media knocking about in society and there's been very little movement on mm. regulation, taxation, um, and you know, going forward, these some of the worst issues they're gonna get significantly worse, right? So we do need to start thinking about what is the best way to effectively regulate. Okay, right.